Have you ever been browsing for homes online in San Francisco and came across a property that just seemed too good to be true, listed substantially below comparable units on the market, and you browse down to the remark and it says that it's a TIC? Well, in today's video, I'm gonna be telling you guys what the heck a TIC is here in the city of San Francisco and why they might be a good option for you. What's up everybody, my name is Andres Restrepo and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm a real estate agent here in the city of San Francisco. This channel is all about bringing you information that may help you make a smarter move in the future. So let's jump right into it. TIC is short for tenants in common. TIC property types are a form of co-ownership in which you own an undivided interest in a piece of real estate. TICs are very similar to condos and they have something called a TIC agreement, which is very similar to the CCNRs of a condo. TIC agreements outlines all of the rules and who gets what sort of interest in the property, meaning that if your unit is a little bit larger and it has a deeded deck, all of those things will be specified in that TIC agreement to create that proper separation. TICs have been around for many decades here in the city of San Francisco, and they came about because San Francisco has historically been a very expensive place. Back in the day, groups of folks would get together to buy a multi-unit building, and by doing so, it would allow them a lower entry point into the market. Instead of having to fork up the money to buy a multi-million dollar duplex, triplex, or fourplex here in the city of San Francisco, they could get together with friends or colleagues and get a group loan to buy this piece of property. A real estate attorney comes into play because they're the ones that draw up the TIC agreement and here in San Francisco, the main guy is Andy Serkin. Now, I'm gonna want you guys to stay tuned until the end of the video because I'm actually gonna give you a tour of a TIC here in San Francisco so you can see what these properties look like. If you're enjoying this type of content, make sure to drop me a like, comment, subscribe, and let me know what you'd like to see in the next video. So what are the differences between a condo and a TIC? A condo is a legal form of subdivision, meaning that when you own a condo, you own that specific unit and it has its own separate APN number. Meaning that if you go into the county's office and you look at the deed, there is one owner for that property. When you own a TIC, you own an undivided interest in a property, meaning that you own a piece of a property. So when you go to the county's office and you look at the deed, all of the owners that have an interest on that property will be listed as the owners. Well, at this point in the video, some of you might be asking yourselves, well, why would I wanna buy a TIC? Why not just buy a condo? TIC seem like they're just confusing. Well, I'm gonna list some of the pros of owning a TIC. The biggest pro, hands down, of buying a TIC is that you get more bang for your buck. Generally speaking, TICs are priced anywhere between 10 and 25% lower than condos. So if your budget for a condo is 1.4 and that only gets you a two bedroom, maybe if you look at TICs, you might be able to get a third bedroom. Pro number two is that they look, live, and feel just like a condo. You would have no idea that you're in a TIC unless somebody told you. And reason number three is that some TICs are eligible for condo conversion. So generally two to four unit TIC buildings can convert into condos. Two unit buildings have a fast track condo conversion if you meet certain requirements. So that is a big value add component. If you're looking at TICs that could convert down the line into a condo because you'd be increasing your property values by 10, to 20%, that's a pretty good return. Now, TICs don't just benefit buyers. There's actually also pros for sellers. If you own a multi-unit building here in the Bay Area, there's two ways that you can sell that building generally. You could choose to sell the whole building or you could get a TIC agreement in place and sell each unit individually via a TIC sale. Now, the economies of scale kick in. If you sell the whole building, it's kind of like buying in bulk, you'll get a lower price per square foot. But if you turn it into a TIC and you go to sell it, you could get a higher return. Point number two for sellers. If you own a triplex, let's say, and you live in the top unit, and maybe you wanna sell the other two units below, you can totally do that via a TIC agreement as well. So you could still keep your interest in that top floor unit, which could be a really good alternative for those of you who don't wanna leave entirely. You wanna own an interest in your property still, and maybe just sell a couple of units, that is a possibility. And it's not all sunshine and rainbows. Let's talk about the cons because there are some cons and you definitely wanna evaluate those to see if TICs are a good option for you. So one of the cons would be the lending. TICs are fractional ownership. So you need a fractional loan. 
Currently, there's only about six lenders in the San Francisco Bay Area in the world, as far as I'm concerned, that actually lend on these property types. Another thing to consider is that they only have adjustable rate mortgages and no 30 year fix like you would have with a conventional mortgage. So this is definitely something to keep in mind and you should evaluate this when you're looking at your time horizon so you understand what you're getting into. As of now, there's only 15 years fixed and the minimum down payment they can put for a TIC is 10%. Another potential con for TICs is that they are subject to rent control, okay? So you need to keep this into consideration if you plan on renting your TIC down the line. Keep in mind that whenever you move out of your property, you can always set the rents to market. So that's why it's always very, very good for you to speak with a leasing agent. I do a lot of leasing in the city myself, uh, but speak with whoever you feel most comfortable and get a feel for what the rental market can bear so you don't cap yourself down the line after you've rented your property because you are gonna be subject to certain rent increase limitations. Now let's talk about some of the cons for sellers. Generally, there is a smaller TIC market out there, which means that you'll have less of a buyer pool. Now, a lot of this has to do with the fact that many folks just don't understand TICs. They view them as a bad thing and they try to shy away from them. And even a lot of real estate agents here in the city do not understand what TICs is. But one of the cons for sellers, again, would be the fact that many folks don't understand them. So there's less of a market for them. And then con number two is that on average, they take a little bit longer to sell than condos, but this is always gonna be on a case by case basis, right? So if a TIC is eligible for condo conversion, this can be viewed as a very, very attractive investment to some folks, and that might cause it to sell fairly quickly. So do factor these things uh, when you are looking at these property types. TICs are a great option for those that don't necessarily have the largest budget, even though there are TICs that sell in the millions of dollars, but they offer, again, a lot of the conveniences that a condo would generally at a lower entry point. If you have any questions about how TICs work here in the city of San Francisco, I would love to be your resource. My contact information is below. For anything real estate related here in the city of San Francisco, feel free to drop me a line. I would love to work with you and possibly meet you in the future. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found some value from it. Again, don't forget to like the video it really helps me reach a wider audience of folks that might benefit from this information. I'll see you guys in the next video and let's jump right into this property tour. What's up folks? So today we are over here at 929 Alabama Street. This is a five unit TIC behind me and we're gonna check out unit 929 which is a really cool two bed, one bath listed at 849,000 which is super low for anybody that knows the Mission neighborhood. You know, the average two bed out here is going to cost you around 1.2. So a really good entry point for those that are looking to get into the marketplace. And the Mission District is an awesome neighborhood. You have True Laurel, Trick Dog, Flower and Water, and many, many more restaurants all within walking distance. Not to mention one of Martha and my, pers and my personal favorite, Tartine Manufactory. Uh, for those of you that like that fire sourdough bread and SF. So without further ado, let's go check out this unit. Welcome in guys. So this is the two bed and one bath. Property was built in 1904, so it's a very, very old building. However, as you can tell, it's all been nicely updated, starting from the engineered white plank part of the floors. This would be bedroom number one over here with a really nice bay. And then come along this way. Yeah, these really nice sliding doors that bring you into bedroom number two. So this could be utilized as a one bed den, one bed office. We have a nice little coat closet down here, just additional storage. Here's your furnace. All right, and then just like all Victorians, we have these amazing high ceilings, which really add a lot of space to a unit. Everything here has been freshly updated and renovated, as you can tell. You have really nice quartz countertops, and I believe the, uh, the stove top is Bosch and it is gas, which gas is obviously optimal if you're looking uh, you know, to do a lot of cooking. And then here is the bathroom. Everything is brand new as you guys can tell. So, like I said, this looks, feels, and lives just like a condo. So there really is no reason to shy away from these property types because they do offer quite a bit for folks that are looking for something nice. 
as you can tell. All right, here's our fridge with the pretty player, player-esque lights. You have your freezer down here. All right, and then, um, you know, just like a condo, this has an HOA. The HOA is 509,000, and that includes, you know, pretty much the building maintenance, and there also is a shared backyard. So let's pop on out here. Ooh, check it out. So there's your backyard. Obviously, this is your fire escape and pretty low maintenance. I'm sure you could probably put a grill down there and just, you know, kick it. You gotta have this, come here. You gotta have this, all right? Everybody knows that you need a washer and dryer, all right? No more going to the laundromat. A lot of TICs, like I mentioned, have been really, really nicely updated. So, don't shy away from them. If you guys wanna see more content like this, definitely drop a like uh, to the video. Let us know what you think of this unit. Hey, could you see yourself in a TIC? Do you still have doubts or concerns? If you do, make sure to reach out. We'd love to help you and walk you through how these unique property types work here in the city. They're not something to shy away from. SF has a lot of them, and they are a great alternative for those of you that are looking to get into your own home. So, hope you enjoy the video, and I'll see you guys in the next one.